In this video, we'll talk about a dunder method called init. Now, first of all, what is dunder? It basically means double underscore method init. So when you look at init, you will see two underscore at the start and at the end. Something similar to what we have done with the name variable. It's just that this time we are working with a method. But why do we need it? Let's understand that step by step. So till this point, we have worked with a computer, which is a class. And then the way you create a class is class, then a computer name. And then you mention the method name, which is config here. And then we are able to create two objects and then we are able to call it. And we have seen multiple ways of calling a method, but let's stick to one style now, which we are going to continue, which is the object dot the method name. Now, what we have done till now is we got all these particular values, which is we are printing in the config. Okay. Now the problem is, doesn't matter how many objects you create. So when you got a computer class, you can get multiple objects, right? So let's say it's a factory where you have given the design for the computer. A factory can create thousands of objects of it, or maybe millions, depending upon who wants to buy it, right? Uh, but then everything will be having a same config. We don't want it. E even Apple go for different configuration with their limited range of designs. But we got multiple options there in terms of CPU power or RAM or the storage, right? So I want to have different configuration here. So how do we do it? Logically, if you think, when I create a computer object, in this bracket, I should be able to pass the values. But how will you accept it? How will you assign it? That's the question we are trying to solve here. And before I do that, I want to show you one, one thing. Now, if you look at this computer class, we got only one method, but there are no properties here. There are no variables for this particular class. So if I come back here and say computer one dot, can I access a particular variable? Let's try. So in fact, I should be doing that in a print statement. So I will say print. And let's say I want to print a CPU here. Now, look at the class. Do we have CPU variable? Of course not. So if I try to run this, first of all, I have to get into op and then I will say python demo.py. And when I say enter, you can see we got an error. It says we don't have anything called CPU here. Computer object has no attribute called CPU. And Python is right. There's no CPU here. So what we can do is we can actually create a variable or attribute. I can say comp1.cpu is equal to, let's say, i5. Okay, you can actually do that. But if I try to run this, it works. Okay, so even if you don't have a variable inside a class, after creating an object, you can assign a value to it. Something like, let's say if you buy a laptop, we don't have a webcam on a laptop, and you will say, hey, where do you, where you, where you will find a laptop without a webcam? I did. I once bought a Asus machine, Asus laptop. I think it was a gaming machine, and it was not having a webcam. <laughs> That's weird. I got to know that after buying it and then I have to literally buy an external webcam, connect it. It works, but then that's an external thing now. So when you try to do that, when you say I'm creating a variable externally after creating the object, it works only for this particular machine. If you try to do that, so you can you can see there's no error, but the moment you say CPU2 now, does CPU2 have access to CPU? And the answer is no. CPU is only for the comp1. Okay, so this, you can create attributes, you can assign it, but then you can't access that in the other but, uh, other objects. So we can do this, but we don't want to do, do this. So what's the other option? The other option is you can create a variable inside a class. And with that, we have to understand different types of variable inside a class. One of the type is the class variable. The second type is the instance variable. Now, what is class variable? So let's say if I create a variable called CPU here, and if I assign a default value, which is i5, now this variable here is a class variable, which means the variable is there. You can print it. It will not give you error now by saying, hey, I'm not able to find CPU. It will be able to find CPU. But then this becomes a class variable. That means all the objects will share the same value. Okay. And how do you access it? One way is using the object and second way is using the class itself. Why class? Is because it's a class variable. It's common for all the objects. Maybe it's something like brand. So when you go to a factory by saying, okay, I want to build different computers, but then the brand will be common. Let's say Telisco is the brand and it will have different configuration, but the brand remains common. I hope you got the point. So if you want to set a brand, you can make it as a class variable. But CPU as a class variable doesn't make sense because every object should have a different value for it. So this should not be doing. Let's go back to comp1. Now, how do you create a instance variable? Instance variable basically means a variable belongs to an object and every object should have a different value for it. I mean, they can have same value, but 
you can have different values. Now to do that, we need to use something called a method which is in it. And that's how we started, right? So this is a method. Now it needs two underscore before and two underscore after. And that's a method. So you have to give the round brackets. And now you can do it. Now what you want to do? Let me just print to check if things are working. I will say in it in it called. Now what happens is every time you create an object, it will call the init method by default. So behind the scene, even if you don't know it, it will call it. Okay, so with this statement, it will call it will create the object for you and it will call the init. Let me show you that you will get an error and you got the error. It says init takes two uh, takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. So this init where we are not accepting anything, it is saying that you are passing one argument. Now you will say, where's the argument? I'm not passing it here, but every time you create the object, it will call init. And since we can have multiple objects, don't you think it will? it is going to pass the object here? And that's right. The first parameter of init is always self and that's a compulsory parameter. Otherwise, this will cry. Python will cry by saying, what you're doing? Run. And you can see it says init called two times. Why two times is because we got two objects. If you create three objects, it will call three times and you try it out and let me know. If you create 10 objects, it will, it will, it will call in it 10 times. But why we got error for CPU? Because we still don't have CPU. So let's create one. How do you create a variable? You can simply come back here and say CPU is equal to I5 and your job is done. Let's try and let's see the error. And the other is it still says I'm not able to find the CPU. Reason now is you are creating a variable, but that becomes your local variable. This thing you can't access outside is because it does not belong to an object. So let's make it belong to an object. And you can do that by saying self.cpu. So whatever object you're passing in this bracket, you're not passing it, but behind the scenes it's being passed. That object will get an attribute called CPU. So it doesn't matter how many objects you create, every, every object will get this CPU now. And let's see the output and it works. So you can see we got two init called logically, that's right. And then we are printing the CPU only once and that's why you got i5 here. Beautiful, right? And that's how you do it. But I want some other values as well. So self.ram, I can say ram is uh, 16 GB, then self.ssd. Let's say this is 1 TB. Not ITB, but 1TB. Okay, this is how you can assign the values and you can access all these values outside. No problem there. But when you call config, it is going to print this. Doesn't matter what values you have here, it will always, always print this. So I don't want this to be printed. What we can do is we can say config colon and then you can pass the values CPU, RAM and SSD here. So you can type CPU. Uh, let's try to print CPU now, nothing else, but it will give you error. It's not able to find CPU. Then you will say, hey, it belongs to the object. Then Python says, if it belongs to the object, why you're not using object here? Okay, Python is always right. It's your mistake. So we can also access uh, self.ram. We can also access self. Uh, do, 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 SSD. And now let's see if things works out. Let's run and it, it works. You can see we got config printed, but we should also print config with comp2. But unfortunately, it will print the same value. Both are same. It's because we are assigning static values. How do you make it dynamic? It's so simple. Just pass it. Just pass it. So in, when you are creating the object uh, by calling the constructor, just pass the value. Let's say the first machine has i5. Then you are passing, let's say, 16 GB RAM. And then you are passing, let's say, the hard drive, which is one or five one two gb the thing the same thing you can do for the second machine here and maybe you can say this is i9 this is like a machine on steroids okay this is the configuration you need maybe even 64 is less for 19 uh, i9 i think uh, one of the machine in my office is 96 gb for the editing and the person who's editing this video will enjoy it because it's his machine anyway so Let's not print CPU anymore. Let's stick to configuration and let's see what it prints now. Run. Oh, we got an error. It's because we are passing these values, but nowhere we are accepting it. So we need to accept it, CPU, RAM, SSD. So when you are passing it, also accept it. And whatever value you got here, just assign it here. 
right? So whatever CPU you got, assign it here. Whatever RAM you got, assign it here. And whatever SSD you got, just assign it there. And let's clear this and run. It works. If you can see, both the objects got different values. And that's what we wanted from the start. So yeah, that's how we work with init. But let me point out one more thing. In the object-oriented programming, or whenever which, whichever language implements it, basically whenever you create the object, it calls something called a constructor. And maybe somewhere we have used that term constructor before. Now, constructor has this special property where constructor belongs to a class and every time you create the object, it will call the constructor by default. In Python, init is the method which gets called by default when you create the object. Does this make a constructor? And the answer is no. Constructor is different. This is just a init method which is used to initialize the variables or values. This is not a constructor. We'll see the constructor maybe later, but this is not a constructor. Okay, just wanted to point that out. And yeah, that's it from this video. See you in the next part.